position, but we do not have the same rights. We need to not neglect to thank the women who rose up to fight for us girls to have the same equal rights as guys in this country. Knowing this information about the movement, it will help everybody see what went on during the movement and how strong that these women were that rose up to help us. After doing the research, I'm able to inform you about the women's rights movement. And today I'm going to tell you about how the women were treated before the movement and how hard they had it. The change that occurred after that the movement took place and then what, how everything was after the women's rights movement happened after they were able to vote. My first topic today will be how difficult it was for the women before the movement. Between the mid 1800s to the early 1900s, they were, very, they were treated unequally when compared to men. They were seen as dead in the eyes of the law, and also they were owned as property when they were married to men. And speaking of property, they couldn't even own any type of it. They couldn't even have custody of their children until a law was passed in 1840. They had certain laws that they were required to do, such as taking care of the home, tending to the husband, to the children, preparing meals. That was the only jobs that they were ever trained to do. And the majority of females, very small, if any, had any type of education, they had none. And some states, colleges, with very few exceptions, accepted women to go to college. And there was a gathering before this was changed, and it was a convention that was held in Seneca Falls, New York, on July 19, 1849, and only 68 women had attended, but once women heard that there was conventions being held, they started to want to join these, so more conventions were held, and according to the Women's Rights Movement from NPS, a pledge was signed, similar to this one right here, and over 100 women had signed it. Well, later on, the National Women's Right Convention was held, and over 1,000 women attended it. It was an extreme turning point for the women's movement. And two women from the National Women's Suffrage Association, which this association, it was primarily arranged for women being able to vote. They were trying to do that. And Elizabeth, or Elizabeth Caddy Stanton was one, and Susan B. Anthony, and they were a huge impact on the women's rights movement. And what they did was they went around lecturing and protesting, trying to get people to realize that, that women need to be equal. And also they had a, a newspaper, it was called The Revolution, and their main headline was, men, their rights nothing more, and women, their rights nothing less. They were trying to establish justice for all. So they, other women took notice that they were doing this and they wanted to join the march because they thought, well, if they can do it, then I can do it. And as you see, they had some advertisement out and with like little like wording with them. This one everybody's probably familiar with. And women started going around joining the march. And women, these women were doing their best to try to make a stand to show that they were, they were able to be equal, but the Congress still laughed in their face. But they would not give up because they were determined to make a change in the nation. But as time continued, an event, an event occurred that shocked the whole nation. And all around, different types of clubs.